All right, so here's the Euro dollar five minute chart, and we'll take a look at the annotations here. Uh, right away, you can see that there is an optimal trade entry here. Now, before I get into it, just know that we have been anticipating the completion of the market maker buy model on the dollar index, and that would translate to lower prices expected in Euro dollar and cable. Cable, we were a little reluctant to do anything with, obviously, because the market structure that was in play the last time we spoke. So Euro dollar is the favored pair between the two. Previous high, low ahead of midnight New York, rallies up into optimal trade entry. So the shaded area here is 79% retracement, 62% retracement, respectively, when you're anchoring your FIB from here to here. So that's what these little arrows are denoting. Buy side liquidity pool resting above here. So it runs into that, into London open kill zone, creating the high of the day. Distribution. This is the opening price at midnight. So anything at that price or above is ideal for shorting. So right away we have a Judas swing sending us up into optimal trade entry. London open kill zone, time and price. Everything going opposite to the direction we anticipate, which is lower prices in euro, higher prices in dollar. And the market shows displacement. Now, as price creates this run from here down to here, the range high and low for optimal trade entry, 62 and 70% respectively, compared to the high here and the low, just like we're showing it here. I just have it as a dotted line because I don't want to have another rectangle shaded because it would just make the chart a little muddy so it trades back up into that and through the fair value gap that's here so it trades up into the optimal trade entry and bearish order block which is this last up close candle right in here i'm using the body or opening price projecting that out and i want you to take notice that this is 905 okay 905 so it's just outside by five minutes the new york open right here. So what we're showing you is that during non-farm payroll weeks, there's a slight difference to the precision that's usually seen when you're not trading on non-farm payroll week. Now this is Monday. This is one of the days that we say that the delivery is a little bit, or let me say it this way. I anticipate it to be a little bit better and tradable than that of Thursday and Friday or that of Wednesday late New York session going into London close. I don't want to be trading any that price action. Predominantly, you're going to find that this is not the case on Mondays and Tuesdays on non-farm payroll week, but it can creep in and create these little times where it just doesn't line up as perfect as we'd like to see it. Buy side liquidity pool resting above these relative equal highs. Trades break back up again. So what is it doing? It's taking stops opposed to the direction we think the market's going to go. Where's it going to go from here? Well, we have the initial low of the day here with sell side liquidity, and it trades down below and tacks that, and then comes back into consolidation, taps the fair value gap discount low, sells off again, and falls short of running out the lower low that was formed in London close. Now, I said we would be focusing on midnight to noon. Okay, that's what we have here. And I want you to study what this looks like from a daily range perspective. Now, obviously there's more trading going on for this particular day of the 1st of March, 2021. But I want you to take a look at how as a intraday scalper, you can frame your day, midnight to noon, New York time. The opening here, the rally up, creating the high of the day, the low forming here in London close, and then the closing price here right on this candle. So if you were drawing a daily range open high low close bar, it would be opening with the high here, the low here, and the close right there. So we're working with the accumulation, manipulation, and distribution or power three in the daily range. So we're focusing primarily on the highest probable times of the day and we're using the smallest measurement for the daily range, which is midnight New York 
to noon New York. Now, obviously, I've been teaching you till 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And in fact, True Day is a little bit longer than that. We're going to go into that at the time when you cross that bridge in the mentorship. But for right now, I'm not trying to blur the lines. I'm not trying to confuse anyone. The students that are mentorship students at charter level or later in the months, they are looking at the lessons I'm giving now and they're trying to figure out what's the benefit of doing it. Well, this is exactly what you should have been doing all through the free lessons I was doing on YouTube. All the live sessions I did on YouTube, all the recorded sessions, all those things over the years, this is what should have been in the order I was delivering it. This is what you were supposed to be doing. That's what the first four months of this mentorship is like. I'm condensing all that time for free on YouTube into these lessons. So that way I'm pulling out what you should have been doing and what you should have gleaned from it. Also real quick, I got an email from one of the new members asking if I could give a summary or a kind of like a bullet point idea of what each month you should be learning. Uh, what you should be learning is the introduction to everything I'm teaching in those lessons. <laughs> okay. The lessons are pretty self-explanatory and they are all introductory only. So that's what you're supposed to be learning. Should you be mastering each one of those things? Absolutely not. Okay. So I'm not trying to kick the can down the road, Destiny. I'm just trying to let you know that they're very specific in their topic and they're introductory only. And they will help you understand me going forward. And when you get into newer lessons, how to navigate the commentaries because it's too dense for me to say, here's what you're going to learn and know just because you watched this month's content. You're not going to do that. It's too much content. Okay. It's too many things. And I've already kind of mentioned this before already. I don't want to try to keep uh, repeating myself about it because if you listen to the commentaries, the, the real time commentaries, like right now, uh, I'm kind of like answering all the questions that I would normally defer, you know, over the first two months or three months, I'm throwing a lot at you and it may be a little overwhelming. It may be a lot and it may feel like, you know, I hear what you're saying. I see what you're showing, but I'm not retaining it. And it's normal for you not to be able to retain it. Okay. Just as fast as you would see someone that would be uh, a very skilled pianist. You know, if you're trying to take piano lessons, just because you spent time with that pianist for a month, you're not going to be able to play like that pianist. Okay. You're not going to be able to read the music like the pianist. You're not going to be able to know how to string the notes together. You're not going to be able to do all the things that that pianist is doing. But you're going to become familiar with these things that the pianist does. His little quirky things or she does while she's doing whatever it is she's doing in her lessons. You're learning small little pieces over time. You don't realize that you're learning, but you are. And every little step forward you go forward in this mentorship, you're getting more. So try not to think about, I need to give myself a report card and what did I retain from last month? All you need to know is write down any questions that come up. And as they come up, you'll find that they get answered as you go further into the content. I hate to sound like I'm being insensitive, but there's a lot of folks that came into these mentorship groups, not just this one here, and they want it when they want it. And I'm not going to service you like that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to break the procedure that I have already in place. I have a structure in place and I'm already doing things this year that I've never done before in any other mentorship. In fact, you can look at all the old lessons and all the videos and see that I'm not doing what you see me doing here. So I'm amplifying it because I want you to see what it is that you should be getting over time. And as long as you're doing the things I'm showing you here and while they may not line up and match in your chart, that's normal. But that was the, the really long answer to your email, Destiny, instead of what I've already sent you saying to just focus on what I'm giving you right now. All right, so let's look at cable. British pound versus US dollar. Five minute chart. All right, so here's, I didn't want to put too many things on this one because I don't want to try to draw any excitement or regret having not participated in this pair because I've already been hammering you all just to be careful with this one. So we have relative equal highs in here. This to me is still a little concerning. Uh, even though the high was formed in London open kill zone, which is what we would expect if we're seeing higher prices in dollar. The market breaks down. We have mitigation in here, which is the down close candle. 
and the market trades up and through it into this bearish order block. It breaks lower, attacks the sell side liquidity here. There's a liquidity pool over here. Trades lower, offset distribution below here and here. And I've been talking about offset distribution, so you should know what that is. And the rally up back into the bearish order block, which is optimal trade entry. And it's just outside the New York Open. Time of day, we've been framing, and it fails to make the run below here, retraces back up, and then finally makes the run into this low again here. But notice there's no really there's no symmetry whatsoever except for the continuation with this sell off here in London Close, which is what I've been teaching for the last two weeks, how London Close can be utilized in sync with the higher time frame. I want to take you over to the charts on TradingView and cover a couple things as a kind of like a multi-faceted teaching today. And I don't want to do too much, but I want to cover a couple things and then we'll close this video because I don't want it to be too long. Okay, folks, we're looking at the TradingView.com platform. And I want to make a quick note. I know some of you that just started have encountered the video where I'm talking about how you're supposed to be setting up a demo account and then that demo account setup is no longer useful because the Forex LTD platform and brokerage firm that we use for their demo account because they used the dollar index in theirs uh, that was no longer available to us then we went to uh, somewhere else I can't think of what it was but you can track the timeline throughout the commentaries and such but eventually we made a decision to use Ava trade for their demo account and while you may or may not be able to get that. I'm not certain. I recall why we went from that. I think I made I made the leap from using MT4 to TradingView because of all of the uh, ruckus that was being raised about how it's, it's a scam and it's not. And I, was saying, I use now TradingView. So when it comes to trading with a demo account, none of you in month one should be really worrying about having a demo. And I'm getting a lot of emails that I'm not going to answer from month one now going in month two folks that are asking what they can do to increase their ability to trade using what they've learned in month one because they're telling me they aren't getting as good as a fill as they want on their trades. Apparently you're not listening. <laughs> okay. Apparently I'm not saying it enough. You should not be trying to trade even in a demo period. Period. You should not be doing it. There are times in this mentorship later on that I'll tell you to do certain things and practice with a demo, but you're not trying to build consistency. It's for you to engage, but you are not expected to be doing that in month one or two. You shouldn't be doing it. You wait for me to prompt you in the mentorship, in the lessons to start doing it. The reason why is because you're not going to understand everything and or you're going to hear me say something and it's going to feel like, oh, well, he's just giving me a secret message to go in here and take a trade. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm not doing that. So just be mindful that you should not be concerning yourself with demo account setups right now. Just use TradingView, TradingView.com. Now, they do have this application down here, which is the trading platform I use whenever I show my examples. Like if I'm doing executions and I'm sharing an example for that, uh, this is what I'm using. So if you click on this uh, paper trading thing, this will pop up. And if I'm not mistaken, when you first sign on and you create an account with TradingView, like the free account that allows you to, uh, you won't be able to do three charts like this. So, you know, but I have this up because I want to make sure I cover all three of these things before I close this video. Uh, but It'll allow you to set the account to whatever you want to start with and just as well as you would be expected to eventually practice with a demo account in trading your setups or your model or practicing the things I give you as homework. The same thing can be done here. Okay. You don't need an MT4. You don't need that. Now there are tools that you'll be able to get in month 12 that you can apply to MT4 and I don't think there's anything for you to be worried about. It doesn't mean it's a scam because you're using those tools or those indicators. And I said that bad word on the indicators, but there's some tools that I make available to you when you're in month 12. So in that forum post, there will be a, a list of 
I'm just, I'm not sure what exactly it is anymore. I haven't touched on it for such a long time, but there's a lot of you that want those tools. You know, how to get the the 50 levels, the the full figure levels, the 20s and 80s levels to appear on your chart. And it's just too many lines for my liking, but I know you all want them. But they're made available to you at the month 12 because prior to month 12 and before you become a charter member, they're really a distraction. They're just going to be an enticement for you to get in there and do more than you're supposed to be doing instead of observing and studying price. But the the idea of setting this demo up, and you can see this is the last trade example I showed you. I don't do and burn through accounts. <laughs> I mean, there's so many things people say all the time. They have no idea what's going on. But if you want to see like uh, your account, say you want to set it up where, say you're going to eventually work with a demo account that is realistic and no one's going to start trading with live funds with $50,000. So to have an account with 50,000 or a hundred thousand of demo dollars is just stupid. Okay. It's dumb. It It's going to cause you to do things that you wouldn't normally do anyway. And nobody's going to put that much money into it when they feel like they're ready to do it with live funds. You're just never going to do it. So to set it up in a way where it's useful to you, you can do the account to whatever you want and say you want to set the account up for $5,000. Okay. $5,000. You click on that. Boom. And now your account will be at 5,000. Now, if you're using this to trade, like say you're looking at uh, a currency over here and I don't trade dollar, obviously we use it as a barometer, but you're just going to go anywhere on the chart. And if you want to like practice by buying or selling at the market, I'm not going to teach you limit orders because that's actually taught later in the course. But you, if you want to take a trade in here, say you were trading this market and it wasn't the dollar, say it was the Euro or whatever you right click on the chart anywhere over here. And then you go down to trade, you go to create new order, and then you would do your quantity, what leverage size of position you're going to be putting on. You put your take profit and your stop loss and whether you're buying or selling and then you click and there it is, it's and you're in the market. Okay. So it's the same thing you would be doing in a demo account, but everything's in one place for trading view. Any, there's no real reason for you to be outside of this platform. In my opinion, it's got so many bells and whistles and tools made available for you. It's just, to me, it's a wonderful resource. I, mean, I wish I would have had this when I was coming up. But the point is this. Try not to worry about Ava Trade demo accounts. Don't worry about setting this up and setting that up. Focus just on the charts and the things I'm teaching you because you need to read these things correctly before you even think about doing that. Because demo trading with the incomplete knowledge is just going to build poor habits. It's going to wreck your expectations and very easily discourage you because it'll feel like you don't know what you're doing. And that's what it would be showing you that you don't know what you're doing. So don't even touch a demo account right now. You're supposed to be studying what these candles do and why they're doing what they're doing at the time they're doing it. There's a lot of lessons before you even consider touching a demo account. So that's probably not what you want to hear, but it's exactly what you need to hear. Okay. It's what you need to hear and what you need to submit to. This is exactly what I said was going to be like when you got in here. All right, so right away, uh, I want to talk a little bit and bring to light that this old high back here was the market maker buy model. We said that the buy side liquidity, that would be the draw on liquidity. We opened up lower. Make this chart a little bit bigger. So here's that old high. We opened down. We gapped down, and then we traded up, and we traded above this high. Let me put a little line on here so you can see. So we went through that and cleared the buy side liquidity there. When this occurs... Okay, remember I've made several distinctions about when I move to the sidelines and I say something's done for right now. We don't think about a liquidity imbalance, whether it be buy side imbalance or sell side imbalance, once it fills and we're, it's done. We don't think of that and say, okay, that one's done. We use that information. But when we run out a buy side model like this and we get to the liquidity, this is about when we want to slow down. Now they can still punch higher, but in here with the given calendar as we have now, non-farm payroll week, the characteristics of this week, as I mentioned many times before, and you'll hear me say this every single month, it's going to be annoying, but it's important for you to know that the market delivery on this week, every single month when there's non-farm payroll Friday, the data can be really just unreliable. It's just, 
it isn't worth pushing your luck in this week. Okay. So now since we have a market maker buy model that's complete, what does that mean? We've taken out the buy side liquidity on the opposite end after it dropped all the way down. Smart money reversal, reaccumulation, reaccumulation, another level of reaccumulation, and up to the original consolidation and taking out that buy side liquidity pool. Look at the video from this weekend and you'll see me cover all that. It's just I'm using a naked chart, just bringing your attention back to this level where we were looking for. It traded to that. Once it does that, then we go to neutral. We sit still and we wait for new developments. We don't go in here trying to push and push and force a trade. We work in this side of the curve till it gets down to a level where we anticipate possibly seeing a turn, as I outlined for you. Then the turn happened. Then we start looking at areas where we can anticipate reaccumulation. Remember, I was talking about this high here and this high here, extending it over time, the fair value gap here and the fair value gap here. Both of those buys were in those points there. It's hard to track without the in information being on the chart. I understand. But if you go back and refer to your notes and what I showed you this weekend, everything is there. It's just, it's a blank chart now. But once it gets up here, we wait. We wait for a new setup, a new market structure idea to form. It may continue or it may reverse. We don't know that at this moment. And we don't care really. We don't care to know because given the week that we have right now, it's less probability. And now that we've gone through Monday, we only really have just tomorrow, Tuesday, and then London open on Wednesday. But after that, in New York session, we're not trying to do anything else. So if you were a live fund trader and you had already determined what your model is going to be, what trading plan you're going to be using and how you're going to trade and engage with price, you would not be trading with live funds from Wednesday's New York session until the following week. You you just would not be trading live funds. Some of you are not going to listen to that. You're going to test that theory and you're going to lose money and you're going to regret it. And you're probably going to send me an email. So I wish I would have listened to you because lots of people do that. So again, I, it's not because you didn't get told. I'm going to tell you every single month, the same stuff. Non-farm payroll week is a gamble. All right, let's go back into the little charts. Uh, I mentioned S and P 500. And I got an email from a couple of you, and they're all new students. <laughs> they're, hang on one second, get this scrunched up. And let's do, this here. All right, so I discussed how this could be problematic for, for equities, okay? And price was down here. And the concern I received in email from some of you that are new were, look what it's doing here. You know, why is it doing this? I thought you said it was going to go lower. Okay, look at this range here. Okay, because this is what we had in the discussion over the weekend. Okay, this was the range that was there in place. So when we're here, okay, at the open, on Sunday. The market starts trading right here. Is this a market that is in a discount or is it in a premium? It's at a discount. So why would you sell something at a discount? You want to wait for it to become a premium. It can get up to this level here, consequent encroachment, or this level here. You have your sell side and balance, buy side and efficiency. It's gone up into these levels, and now from the high to the low, we are at a premium. Think about what I said. If it takes out this high, then obviously I'm wrong, and I will wait for it to be a concern at a later time. I'm not, I would put it on the back burner is what I said. But we don't, just because I say I'm looking at something that may be problematic and equities may go lower, doesn't mean go right in there and start selling short. You still have to go back to the things I'm teaching you. Where's your dealing range? It's got to go up for us to sell short. We just don't go in here selling short because, you know, that's the best case scenario going forward. You know, it's not what I'm trying to push on you. I'm not going to do that. But it, when it goes up like this, that would be an area where I would like to see it sell off. So I'd like to see it turn in here. And I want to keep this high in place. But we're down here on Sunday. That's not where you want to sell. You're selling something at a discount there. And you may encounter a run up and just get above this high here would be institutional order flow entry, Joe. 
right? This is a SIBI. A consequent encroachment would be midpoint between this low and this high. That would be a level it could have reached to and then completely come all the way up into this low here and a little bit more into it. I don't want to see this high taken out because if it does, then like I said, then stocks will continue to keep going. Okay. Now also with this, this question came up. A couple of you went in and tried to create this chart and couldn't do it. And some of you also reported that you don't see this divergence in here. So I'm going to do this chart over here the same way I did it here, but I'm going to do it over here so that way you can see it. Actually, let's turn this into just two charts. All right. So now I'm going to take the dollar index chart and I'm going to make it look just like this. So I'm going to recreate this whole comparison chart. So we're going to use the symbol for the five-year T-note. And we're going to use the March contract. You're going to be wanting to go to the June contract, but I'm using uh, March, but the data was being referred to back in October, November. You would have been using um, December into March, but I'm using March because it's the closest thing that you can see more data with. All right. So here's your original five-year T-note chart. And you want to make sure, like if, if you do have a, plan for trading view that allows you to do two charts and I don't know what plan it is and I'm not trying to sell you an idea you don't need this I'm just doing this to to make a point here you could literally just trade with trading view with one chart and then open up another chart in another computer okay and it may give you an issue with you have too many charts open for your plan I don't know how they break it down for you. You don't need to use TradingView. I'm just telling you, I'm not going to go to an MT4 platform. I'm teaching through this medium. Okay, so you have to align with what I'm showing you or don't be here. Okay, I mean, I don't want to be curt with you, but this is the only way I'm going to go forward with the teachings. It's going to be using this platform. And if it means you have to pay a little bit, like 180 bucks a year to do another plan, I don't know if that's, something that's useful for you you have to make that determination but they do have a free plan where you can pull data up and you don't need to have the split screen like this all right so which probably raises the question you know well you said you have dollar over here on the left and the trading pair that, that you work with here okay well you're going to be trading with your platform eventually in a demo account or a live account and that will become a way for you to watch one chart on trading view and another chart that you're actually being trading with your with your platform, maybe with an iPad or another computer or another screen using the uh, the tab on your your browser for your internet access. But anyway, the five year note futures, you pull it up this way, and then while this box is highlighted, if you have a split screen, you're going to go over here and click on this and go to line. Okay, you see that. Now, while you're still with this chart highlighted, you're going to click on the compare tab here. And then you're going to type in this symbol right here. ZNH, ZNH2021. Okay. And now you want to do it again for ZBH2021. ZBH2021. Return. Okay, so now you have them all lined up on your chart, and that's a one hour chart. So we need to set it to a four hour, and there it is lower, higher, higher. So I know one gentleman sent me an email saying that this divergence no longer appears. If you do what I just did here, it should be in your chart if it's not i can't answer that i don't know why it wouldn't be there all right so you've learned how to do the overlays now you can do this also with like if you want to do smt divergence for like the dollar index you can do it like this you can go dollar index and you got to take these things off here because they're no longer useful for this okay so here's the dollar index and all right, so now if you have the dollar index and you want to put on like the euro dollar to look for SMT divergence, and you'll learn what that is also. If you don't know what it is, don't worry. 
you're going to click on compare and you'll add euro dollar don't hit return make sure you're grabbing the right one forex.com see it right there that's the one we want okay so that's overlaid and you can see let me make it bigger what is it doing like what's the purpose of having this well you can see we had the euro dollar making higher highs when this lower low did not form in dollar index you see that here's the euro dollar going higher this should have went lower with the dollar index it didn't so that's a divergence there and it gives you kind of like a x-ray view into accumulation and distribution it doesn't always form but when it does at a time when you're anticipating something it's really important to pay attention to it higher high here not the lower low that you would expect in euro and that also signifies potential distribution in dollar and accumulation in euro dollar you change the time frame go into like a 15 minute time frame you'll get a lot more short term highs and lows and you can measure support and resistance ideas with SMT and you'll learn more about this as you go into the content but another example here higher low with the higher high this is a stop run this is accumulation trades higher sells off on euro higher in dollar okay and you can also do now this is USDX SMT divergence now if you want to do correlated pair SMT divergence which is like you want to do GBP USD forex.com and let me take these annotations off so we have now a overlay of euro dollar with British pound so you can change British pound price to a line chart too and scrunch this up a little bit not so much <laughs> all right so what we're looking at here is lower almost equal really see the difference in this one here so this is a divergence to me and this is a divergence higher lower and over here looking at it from the buy side see if we can find an opportunity where you can see a divergence between them now this is not indicators okay it's not a, it's not like a rsi or or something to that effect it's literally comparing price with price if one currency is in more demand than another and when i say that i'm not supply and demand guy okay what i'm saying is is you're visually getting a measurement of the real interest in buying one currency pair over another that's what correlated pair smt is because these two pairs pound and euro are closely correlated that means they usually trade in the same direction but not always when they don't trade in the same direction then you look at the pair that these two together make which is euro pound and that's when the dollar is in consolidation that's when you look at that pair but otherwise you look at these pairs in relationship to the dollar index all right so let's scrub back here a little bit more let's see if we can find a nice energetic run see a lot of distribution the orange makes a lower high blue makes a higher high in an in, in order flow being bearish you can see it's a nice sell off there nice distribution here let me go back to where it was higher in euro cable failed to make that higher high so this is a run on stops euro goes lower this is a failure optimal trade entry where this is a stop run here this is just a failure and going back into internal range liquidity and goes lower both trading in tandem but you're comparing the two and the purpose of doing this and what makes smt which is a short little abbreviation for smart money tool or smart money technique i never really settled on what the t standard for so i just used both <laughs> and when i was back on baby pips teaching it so smt 
what it's doing is highlighting a crack in correlation because in a perfect world if both of these pairs are going to go lower if one goes higher and makes a higher high the other one should have done that same thing but it doesn't so what it's doing is it kind of like gives you an x-ray view behind price action and it shows you that there is more interest in one currency than another and it doesn't always translate that that's the better buy sometimes it does but sometimes it doesn't but the main takeaway is for me is yes if i see bullishness on the dollar right here at the same time when i'm seeing this crack in correlation where euro is making higher high cables failing to make that higher high here on a line chart basis okay that to me is showing an x-ray view of underlying distribution in both currencies and then what i want to look for between those two currencies is which one has the cleanest pd array in other words which one has the better price action and market structure to support a trade because they're both lo most likely going to go lower but sometimes one will stall and you can refer to the pair i mentioned before by breaking these two currencies into one cross which would be euro pound euro pound many times can give you indications of what which pair will outperform also but it has to be at certain conditions in the marketplace. It just can't be every single day. This is look at Euro pound and it's going to give me information. No, it doesn't work that way. Just like I mentioned moments ago and I've mentioned throughout this mentorship, I'm only concerning myself with Euro pound when dollar index is in consolidation. That's the, that's why we don't talk about Euro pound that much. And I don't want to build the idea that you have to always refer to it because it's a step in analysis that will bog you down. And if you don't really understand what you're doing, the relationships between the cross pairs and that cross pair manipulation, that will be very paralyzing. Like you won't know what to do. And I'm pointing at things here and they're probably thinking, what is he showing? <laughs> I don't get what you're showing me, ICT. You will see plenty of examples of it, okay? But just for right now, I'm just introducing the idea that what you will sometimes look at in my charts and my overlays, how to create them, what I, what I just showed you here okay but it gives you an x-ray view without indicators because all you're doing is looking at the relationship between two closely correlated pairs and if you can see a crack in correlation like this and also the dollar index fails to support this too then you have a real good indication that the market's most likely creating an intermediate term turning point that means it's better than a day trade it's like a one shot, one kill, and maybe even a swing trade for me. And that's kind of like the, the the basis of what I use it for. I don't always reach for it, but when I'm looking for a significant price run, you know, I'm going to look to see if there's anything in there under price like this. You know, lower low here, not in this one here. So look at the movement there. So that's kind of like showing you the accumulation in here, failing to make lower lows while this one went lower. And look at the market goes higher this one here go back to that which one's going lower the orange one what's that euro dollar which one's failing to make a lower low when this one's going lower cable cable outperforms on the upside euro fizzles out and can't go higher see that And eventually they get in sync with one another again and start to trade in tandem. But when there's cracks in correlation like that, it'll give you an x-ray view on where the central banks are looking to reprice aggressively. And it gives you just a little confidence booster. That's the way I look at it. It's, it's not like I could trade without it. I don't really need it. But it was something I discovered by going through certain ways of looking at price action. All right, so that's going to be it for today. And I will touch base with you tomorrow in the next daily log entry. Until then.